Hi, welcome to Tessera's- Tessera's Nerf Room. Well, damn, I was gonna review The Abolisher today, but I guess you guys really want me to cover the trilogy. So, before I actually say anything else, I just want to give a quick disclaimer here. I am perfectly fine with blaster review requests because, I mean, my collection is really big. I'm gonna run out of ideas eventually, so it's fine to have people requesting what blasters they want me to take a look at as a priority. But, uh, please only request one time. Because a lot of the requests on this are by the same person, and the way that my request system works is when I see a request, I put that blaster on a list. And I add that blaster to an ever-growing list of blasters that I know people want me to review as priorities. And depending on how many requests I have, I prioritize different blasters over other ones. Uh, the trilogy is four blasters away right now. And that doesn't even have to do with, like, the blasters I feel like reviewing today. I felt like reviewing the Abolisher today, but, like, I keep getting messages and I keep getting comments asking me to cover the trilogy. So, like... I understand that y'all want me to do the trilogy, but please, I already know you want me to do the trilogy. The trilogy is on the list. I've prioritized this blaster today because I knew that I was just going to get more requests to cover the trilogy today. Please, stop. I know you want me to cover the blaster. Just let me work. But with all that said and done, let's take a look at the trilogy. But first, intro time. <laughs> Elite Trilogy is a 2019 release in the End Strike Elite series and is kind of the sequel to the Sledgefire. Sequel to the Sledgefire? I mean, the Sledgefire came out in 2013. It doesn't really make sense for Hasbro to do a sequel six years later, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter. This blaster is really, really, really cool and really, really, really weird. But first, we got to start with the design before we can talk about anything else. This thing looks like crap. I don't like the way the trilogy looks at all. It looks really weird and it's got a vibe to it, definitely. It's got this humongous barrel on the front, this big chunky pump handle, this super short stubby stock, and it looks like some form of like RPG or something. Like it seems like you should be holding it like this, but no, you're, you're meant to hold it like this. And it doesn't look or feel like a shotgun. It doesn't look or feel like a blaster. It looks and feels like a submarine toy. It's a really, really weird design. I don't really like it. I think it has a vibe to it, but it just doesn't make any sense. One thing that's cool is that the front looks like the Titan CS50. So like if this thing spun, it literally looks just like the way the Titan CS50 looks. It even has the little kind of like vent ports in the sides of this thing, just like the Titan CS50 has right there. That's just a cool little detail. I'm not gonna lie, I love that. That's awesome, but that is one of the few things that I genuinely like about the design. I think that the kind of grills and vent ports on the blaster do give it more of an aesthetic, but overall it just looks really weird and really, really dumb and not like a three shot shell ejecting shotgun at all. And there's no paint on the other side is why would there be paint on the other side? But let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster consists of a main grip, a foregrip, and a stock. If we take a look at the main grip first, you can see that it is actually really small. It's not a very big main grip, but it's comfortable. This feels really, really good. It is very smooth and rounded all the way around, and the plastic quality is actually very sturdy on this one. On top of that, there really aren't any details that dig into your hand, aside from maybe these ridges on the front. I feel like those could get annoying if you hold it for too terribly long. But all in all, I don't think that the grip is bad, and it definitely is not going to be alienating to someone with a bigger hand. Unless you have, like, freaking Godzilla hands that hang over the bottom of the grip, you've definitely got space to work. Your fingers aren't going to be hanging over the edge of the grip. I think it's just fine. As for the foregrip, it is really dumb looking, but it is a very, very comfortable, very nicely designed handhold that you can easily get a good grip on. I love the way that this thing feels. They definitely prioritized function over form with the foregrip, and I can respect them for that. As for the stock, well, as a stock, it is pretty comfortable, but it's way too short. Like, unapologetically short, like it's shorter than the Retaliator stock, and I just can't stand actually shouldering this. What I use it for is like this. You brace the left side of it against your body and the right side of it against your wrist, and now you've got a pretty solid handhold of the blaster like a shotgun of sorts. 
So I think that it works like that, just not really as a stock. And you actually do have like the ammo storage back here. So it works considerably well just doing it like that. So that works. How does this blaster work though? Cause I mean, looking at it, it it's kind of hard to tell. Well, you got this big door on the top. You pull this back and it opens the door. You take a shell with three darts in and you drop it into the top. Then you close it and you can fire all three at once. Then afterwards, when you prime it again, it doesn't eject and it jams. That's what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to eject out the shell, but uh, the mechanism on this blaster is very, 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 very broken. The prime smoothness of this mechanism is not good at all. It feels really, really fiddly because there's a lot of mechanical malfunctions going on here. Not really malfunctions, but just a lot of mechanical slop going on with the mechanism in general. And it just doesn't work that well. I think that it could be a lot smoother if you were to just lubricate the mechanism a little bit. That would probably work, but I don't really know. And uh, what about the trigger pull? I mean, it gets even worse when you actually put a thing in it. The trigger pull doesn't sound very good either. It's very snappy, but it just doesn't sound very good and it's a really heavy trigger pull so like it's hard to pull the trigger down and um yeah the shell ejection is cool but it just doesn't work that well like shells constantly get stuck in the blaster So the Trilogy is a really weird case, and the reason it took me so long to get this video out is because it has taken me so long to actually test the blaster, because I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or the blaster is just designed poorly. But considering Hasbro's track record for designing mechanisms incorrectly, I have a thought to say that the blaster just isn't designed very well. And that sucks because this has a ton of potential. A shell ejecting top drop in shell fed shotgun is a really, really awesome concept. And hell, Shellington's been doing that for years with their impressive 3D printed blasters. But this thing sucks. It doesn't work very well, it doesn't look very good, and it's just really mechanically sloppy. If you can get around the mechanical malfunctions that this thing has and manage to make it work, because you can get it to work if you use it enough, you get a feel for the mechanism, and you pretty much automatically figure out how hard you're supposed to prime it and how smoothly you're supposed to prime it to get it to work well, but you shouldn't really have to do that. It is kind of a pain in the ass, and you really have to get used to the mechanism, which really, really sucks. I can't possibly say that this thing is a direct successor to the Sledgefire, mainly because the Sledgefire's mechanism is nearly flawless. It looks like a shotgun, it feels like a shotgun, the brake action is buttery smooth, the shells are tiny and efficient, they slide in very easily, the performance is about as good as the Trilogy, and then the brake action shell ejection is very smooth because it doesn't shoot your shell out of the blaster. As much as I hate to say it, the actual concept of this thing as well is also flawed. Because it's a shell ejecting blaster, you are going to run the risk of losing shells constantly since every time you prime it, the shells go flying away. There's no way to easily retrieve the shells unless you like tilt the blaster up and actively prevent it from ejecting the shells, which defeats the whole purpose of it because it's supposed to be a shell ejecting shotgun. Using the Trilogy is fun, but you have to figure out how to use it before you can comfortably use it, which really sucks, and hence, I can't really recommend you take a look at this if you have access to a Shell Strike or a Sledge Fire. I will say though, if you want this, it's cool, and it's very fun, and you can definitely have a lot of fun with it if you're willing to put in a little bit of extra time to really learn the mechanism and possibly open and lubricate it, but uh, with how much is going on here, I am afraid to open it. I'm actually scared to unscrew any of the screws on this blaster because this is one of the few blaster mechs that is so complicated that it frightens me. So uh, do that at your own risk. With all that said, if you want to get this blaster, I'll link it in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.